Um, let me welcome members to the 15th meeting in 2015 in the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee and, as usual, remind everyone present to switch off mobile phones as they may affect the broadcasting system. We have today uh, received apologies from Cameron Buchanan. Uh, the first item is uh, for the committee to agree to take agenda item four in private. This agenda item is a complaint against a cross-party group. The members agree to take this in private. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. That's helpful. Uh, the second item for the committee today is to take evidence from Dave Thompson on the proposed cross-party group on religious freedom. Uh, Dave Thompson is sitting in the witnesses' chair, and uh, I invite David to make a, a brief opening statement on the purpose for the group. Uh, thank you very much, convener, and good morning, members. Um, yes, this, this group um, came about initially after a meeting uh, on the 25th of February, which was held in the Parliament, which was sponsored by myself <coughs> and um, chaired by the moderator of the Church of uh, Scotland, the Reverend Chalmers, and about 50 people attended from a wide range of different faith groups. I had hoped to move things on more quickly following that meeting, but various different things intervened, including the general election, a change of moderator at the Church of Scotland, then the recess and so on. So it took me a wee while to get uh, to the point where I could submit uh, this uh, application to the committee. <clears throat> One of the main things that was discussed in February was the general issue of uh, intolerance, uh, mainly towards people of our religious faith, but also towards others as well. And we had a range of uh, speakers at that meeting, a very wide range, including people from the American and Canadian embassies and various uh, different faith groups, giving us their own particular experiences in relation to uh, intolerance towards faith. Um, the refugee crisis, I think, has really highlighted the issue of religious intolerance, and we all know what has been happening in places like uh, Syria. And I believe it's very important that we promote tolerance amongst people of all faiths and of none at all. And indeed, anyone is welcome to join this cross-party group, whether they have a faith or don't have a faith because what we would hope to do is to foster discussion amongst everyone to ensure that there is a tolerance going into the future. You will see the list of um, proposed members. That's not finite. We would welcome people of other faiths and none, as I say. Um, you may have noticed that although there are a couple of organisations linked with the Roman Catholic Church, the Church itself isn't down as a member. But I do have a quote here from the Reverend Thomas Boyle, who is the Assistant General Secretary of the Bishops' Conference of Scotland, where he says, In addressing the Congress of the United States of America, Pope Francis said, A delicate balance is required to combat violence perpetrated in the name of a religion, an ideology, or an economic system, whilst also safeguarding religious freedom intellectual freedom and individual freedoms. That's the end of the quote from Pope Francis, but Reverend Boyle went on to say, dialogue helps to overcome any form of extremism. And inspired by Pope Francis' words, we welcome the establishment of the cross-party group on religious freedom. We look forward to cooperating with the group and supporting it in its work. So they will now be formal members. And as I say, I hope the group will uh, encompass many more people as it moves forward, if you approve it. Uh, just one final point, uh, convener. Uh, as I'm a member of the committee, uh, I thought that on this occasion I would not take part in the discussion in relation to formal approval of the group and I'll leave it in the hands of my committee colleagues to make that decision. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, very helpful. Uh, there's maybe just a couple of things from the convener's chair uh, that, that, that I'll say before opening it up uh, for discussion. Um, I think the Parliament on the 9th of September 1999 uh, had a very 
interesting discussion that touches on this, on the, the subject of how uh, the Parliament would deal with time for reflection. And I think at that time, Tom McCabe uh, made a contribution that suggested we should reflect those of religious belief and also those of none. And, and that's particularly opposite this week because, of course, our time for reflection leader this week was a secularist rather than someone uh, of, of faith. So, so I think it is perfectly clear uh, that while in considering uh, whether to approve a cross-party group or not, we neither endorse nor reject the uh, purposes of group, which can be very narrow, and indeed we can have groups that uh, take conflicting views on different sides of uh, important arguments. Uh, so that's not a, a matter, really, uh, that uh, we're likely to give much weight to in coming to a conclusion. Um, the, the, the other thing, however, it's worth saying is, of course, that the committee has previously expressed some concerns uh, about uh, whether at this late stage in this session we should be approving other groups. Now, without preempting in any way what position the committee might take on this, I will invite the committee at the end of our discussion on whether to approve this group or not uh, to put on the record that it would be our plan not to approve any further groups. And that's without prejudice to what those any groups that are brought forward might be. So on that basis, uh, colleagues, uh, let me just open it up for uh, uh, colleagues to ask David uh, any questions they feel they want to ask. Yes? I don't think we're here to judge whether a thing's a good or a bad thing, to be quite honest. Um, it, but I would like to say that I, I do believe that um, anything that fights intolerance is something that's, that's a, a worthy thing of supporting in itself. But our purpose is to decide whether or not a, a group should be formed. Um, another thing I would say is that uh, you know, we have a particular problem of intolerance within religious groups. Uh, in Scotland, and you know, one of the benefits that might come from this uh, this holistic view you're taking, those with religion or not, to be involved in it, I think would be a good thing in itself. But having said, as I said, we're, you know, f f for my part, although it is late, I would find it very difficult to um, when we're talking about people's rights. This this is a rights issue, in in, in my view, it's a re religious right. And I would find it difficult, although it's late, I heard what you said, convener, uh, although it's late in the day and we are looking at restrictions in terms of just in time rather than, than on uh, what applications coming in. Uh, but I, I would be minded to say yes. It would seem a bit strange that folk are, you know, are, are asking on the base of uh, of getting together and to fight intolerance that, that we would restrict it because of a time bar. So, thank you. Mary. Thank you, um, convener. I, I have similar concerns around the, the, the time scales, and I wonder if you could give us a bit more information on how many meetings you would intend to have, because given how late we are in the session, um, and, and when we will be rising next year for the election, we don't have a great deal of time for, the, for um, planning meetings. And I wondered if you had considered any other ways to raise the profile of this issue. Yeah, well, thank you for, for the question. Uh, I'm, I'm very aware, uh, as a committee member, of the issues around, you know, registrations being proposed uh, late in a session. Um, we would propose to have a couple of meetings before the Parliament goes into dissolution in March, one probably near the end of November and one in uh, February would be what we would be planning. And I think that would be valuable to allow us to decide exactly the subjects that we will follow through and, and discuss and deal with and allow us to lay the foundation um, for hopefully a reconstituted group after the election in um, May. Okay, and could you cover the point on, did you consider any other methods to raise the, the, the profile of this issue without setting up a cross-party group? Yeah, th th there have been various things held in the Parliament over the last eight years that I've been a member um, that have related to religious issues. Uh, some of them straight praise issues like the Scotland United and Prayer for the Parliament events that take place twice a year in the members' restaurant, which are very well attended. Over 100 people come along to these. 
Uh, there are a number of other things like that. The first formal meeting we had was last February, and that was a, a meeting to gauge interest. And as I say, there were, there were over 50 people. I have the complete list. I'll not read through the whole thing to you just now, but it's available if members uh, wish it. And there was a very full discussion from a panel of, I think it was five uh, people, uh, on a variety of different issues. Uh, the, I think the advantage of having a cross-party group is that it gives it a certain formality. It, it's uh, associated with the Parliament, although it's not uh, anything to do with government or anything like that. And I think it uh, would allow us to um, discuss the issues in a way that an informal ad hoc group just wouldn't be able to uh, operate. Uh, and I don't think the issues would get dealt with in such a, a thorough way that a cross-party group uh, can deal with those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no one else is... Yes, sorry, Patricia. <laughs> Thank you, convener. Good morning again, David. Um, as I understand it, Rule 6.22 of the Code Concerning Cross-Party Groups requires 10 days advance notice to be given to the standards clerks of the intention to hold a meeting. And I, I believe that your own group uh, held a meeting on the 15th of September, but the standards clerks were not notified of that. Could you perhaps explain what happened there? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I've, I've been made aware of that. I thought that had been done. Um, that was a mistake. I, I know the rules and I um, put a, a, the cross-party group in consumer affairs before you just uh, a couple of meetings ago and it complied fully with that rule with the notification. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, it was an error, uh, but I would say that I think the purpose of that rule is to ensure transparency and to ensure that people know what is happening and what is being proposed. And, and uh, this is maybe in mitigation, apart from anything else. I did ask a question in the Parliament, uh, in Parliament on the 2nd of September to the Minister Marco Biaggi, uh, uh, which included a question to him on whether he would support the creation of my proposed cross-party group on religious freedom. And his answer was to the effect that uh, the government would support any group such as that. So, and after that, I put out a press release, which was sent out widely. It wasn't widely covered. It was covered in some areas. So if part of the purpose of the rule is to ensure wide knowledge of what is proposed, then in a sense, I think we may be complied with it there. But I do accept that the, the strict formality of the notification to the clerks uh, in writing didn't take place. Although I know that my assistant has spoken uh, to the clerks and did speak to them before the meeting on the 15th of September, I believe. But it's a mistake for which I apologise. Okay. I, just before, Patricia, I'm, I'm not interested, and I don't think Parliament is interested in whether there were press releases or even matters uh, relating to this on the floor of the Chamber. Uh, all the effect of that is that we know that we didn't know because we didn't know, because it wasn't in the formal process that relates to cross-party groups. And I do ask, whatever the outcome of today's deliberations, that uh, you and your colleagues take very serious account of that, because the rules are there for a purpose, and we've all agreed to these rules, and it's very important, and I don't want to minimise the importance of that right at the outset of consideration of this group. Patricia. Thank you. Um, in, in a sense, convener, you've preempted what I was going to say next, which was that, with no detriment to Mr. Biaggi, he's not concerned with the application of these rules. We are, um, but I, I wonder, given that you did have that exchange with Mr. Biaggi and you um, uh, released information to the press, how was it notified to members? The um, an email was sent round all members, inviting them to show an interest. Every member got the opportunity to, to do that. Um, and I, I don't have the dates off the top of my head, but it was done more than once. That's very interesting. Thank you. 
Uh, if there are no further matters uh, in terms of uh, taking evidence from Dave Thompson, I'll move to agenda item three, and I'll ask Dave Thompson to remain at the other end of the table. Uh, it, this is a, continues to be in public, and therefore you're entitled to be here and uh, hear what has to be said, but I note your previous uh, uh, intention to resile yourself from the discussion we're about to have. Um, agenda item three is for the committee to consider whether to accord recognition cross-party group on religious freedom. Um, Gill has uh, indicated that he's uh, willing to support that, and I take it nothing that I'm getting a nod. Um, are others wishing to put anything on the record before we formally decide? Right, well, I propose that we uh, do agree to accord the cross-party group on religious freedom recognition. Are members agreed to that? We are agreed. Thank you uh, very much indeed. And before we leave agenda item three, I return, as I said I would, um, to seek the agreement from the committee that we are not minded to accept any further applications in this parliamentary session for new cross-party groups on the basis purely um, that there is now insufficient time for these to operate effectively. Uh, and we would hope that our successors uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, in this committee and in uh, the Parliament to be elected next year, take note of that when they're, they're looking at cross-party groups. We're all agreed on that. Yes. Right, that's helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Right, we now move into private session. We will return to public session uh, for uh, agenda item six.